Hi, I'm Nelson Fisk with Janes, and we are here at AUSA 2019. And specifically, we are at the AVX L3 Harris booth, and Lynn Morgan is kind enough to uh, walk us through his aircraft. What we have here is a compound coaxial helicopter. So it's not a conventional helicopter, as you can see as you look over at it. And what you'll notice is that uh, this is for the future attack reconnaissance aircraft competitive program, prototype program. And uh, this particular aircraft is our entry into that program. We uh, got contract for phase one uh, in the spring of this year, and uh, the down select is supposed to be in the spring of next year. Once the down select is done, they'll make two prototypes and they'll compete against each other for the Army contract going forward. Our particular aircraft, uh, we looked at the requirements of having a 40 foot rotor and using a government issued engine and a government issued gun. We put those things together and looked at the requirements for the mission and the only way we can get the hover out of ground effect power is with a coaxial rotor. That's the only one that's going to produce enough power to do the job and the only way we're going to get the speed is with a compound aircraft. We have a wing, we have fans, and we have two coaxial rotors. That's two rotors on uh, the same mast work, uh, working in opposite directions. What that does is our soft in plane rotor gives us the capability to have a lightweight ease of maintenance and low vibration rotor. That system gets us uh, full use of the power. With a coaxial rotor you get about 10 percent more uh, than a, competitor, a, a rotor that's is fairly the same size on a conventional helicopter. The real reason is, is that because torque of one rotor and the torque of the other rotor counter each, can, cancel each other out and that will uh, get rid of the need to put power into a tail rotor system. We also need to get speed. The Army wants uh, at least 180 knots uh, cruise speed on the aircraft. So to get 180 knots, we need to get lift off the wing and we need to get fans to give us that forward speed. This gives us a level flight attitude and it also that gives us the least amount of drag and gets us the best product. You'll also notice that we have weapons on the side. In order to get that speed, we've got to stow the gear and we've got to stow the weapons. So those come open with an activation so we can deploy the weapons or stow the weapons. Once we've got the weapons stowed and the gear stowed, we can proceed on out and get that speed. We have a full sensor suite. Uh, it's a fly-by-wire aircraft. We have no hydraulics on the aircraft. It's an all-electric aircraft. So all of our actuators and, and uh, everything are all electric. Um, we have four batteries and three generators uh, to make sure we have plenty of electric power. Everything is triply redundant. Everything is uh, backed up as far as we can make it. The avionics package, we're, we've started off with a, a full-up IFR certified Garmin co G3000 cockpit. And what we've done is we've gone to our 46 guys at uh, L3, and they've integrated uh, the uh, sensor suite and the weapons and the targeting and uh, the uh, low light flight capability into that system. So we start out with basically a commercial off-the-shelf IFR uh, aviation instrument suite and we make it even better, make it more target friendly and more, uh, we'll call it degraded visual environment friendly. It can be manned run man. You see two uh, two uh, side by side pilot seats. Uh, we believe that uh, side by side pilots better communicate and better operate in the cockpit than they do for and aft. Uh, we also think that either pilot can fly it by a simple flip of the switch to tra transfer controls from one side to the other. By transfer, I mean electric transfer. There's no physical movement. But having the two pilots side by side, one pilot in either seat could actually fly the aircraft with no problem. It's possible to fly the aircraft without a pilot on board. Because it is full fly-by-wire, the uh, flight control computers just need the signal on what to do. And uh, if that signal doesn't come from a pilot stick, it still can do the job. And you're the lead test pilot, right? I am the uh, test pilot on staff. We have two test pilots on staff right now. And uh, right now I'm, I'm the lead and we're working our way through uh, our test protocols and 
trying to figure out to control laws and development. So we're, we're not completely done on the development, but it's uh, an in, a very interesting process. Beautiful. Thank you very much.